In Creo Parametric, the Unite technology allows you to open up CAD files from other software packages directly in Creo Parametric. And that includes CATIA version 4 and version 5 files, UGNX, SOLIDWORKS, and Inventor. Let's take a look at how to do this. I'm going to click the Open button. I'm going to navigate to a folder. And right now I don't see any models in here. I will use the drop down list to change this to all files. Now I can see that there is a SOLIDWORKS file in this folder. If I click the Open button, it retrieves it directly into Creo Parametric. And if you take a look at the model tree, first off, it's got an icon indicating that this is a CAD file from SOLIDWORKS and in the model tree we only have one feature, a SOLIDWORKS ID1 feature. Let's go back to the assembly we had open and this particular assembly has a brake rotor but I want to see what this SOLIDWORKS brake rotor would look like instead. So I can right click on the brake rotor and from the pop-up menu I can choose to perform a replace operation. I'm going to replace by an unrelated component. Let's click the open button and uh, once again I can go to the drop down list and change it to all files. If you take a look in this list though we have our standard Creo files but here you see the CATIA V5 cat part and cat product. Here we have a CATIA V4 model. Here's our SOLIDWORKS NX co-create and inventor. Let's change to SOLIDWORKS because I know that's the format. Then click the open button and as normally I would click the edit ref table and first off it wants something to correspond to this datum plane called top. As we saw earlier there is no datum plane in here so I'm just going to skip that reference tag for now. Let's click on tag one and I can see that it is looking for a cylindrical surface. Let's grab this one over here. For the next tag, it wants the back surface. Let's pick this surface here. And then for tag three, it's grabbing a hole, probably for orienting this or for the different fasteners. Let's pick this particular cylindrical surface. And that's good. Even though I don't have all my tags, I'm going to click OK and then OK to perform the swap and I do get a regeneration failure. I see a cross section is failing so I can click on it and edit definition. If I go to the references tab because it's in red I notice that it's looking for that datum plane called top from the brake rotor part which I just replaced. And so probably the easiest thing for me to do in this particular situation. I don't know if I even need this cross section so I will right click and choose to delete and click OK and my regeneration failure is gone. To make it easier for me to see the brake rotor that I've replaced I'm going to select this component that's in the way and then go to model display, component display style and transparent and create a style state on the fly. And I take a look at the part and I see, oh, you know what? Maybe this particular component is not assembled correctly. So I can click on the brake rotor part from SOLIDWORKS and then edit definition and take a look at the constraints and say, okay, there's my coincident and then this coincident. Let's try flipping this and oh, you know what? That looks much better hit the check mark and so I brought in this component and I'm able to edit definition and change its location. So this is a SOLIDWORKS part again. Let's say I wanted it to be a Creo parametric part. If I click on it and then go to the operations overflow menu, here we have a command to convert to a new Creo model. Similarly, let's say that I activated this part and went about making a change. Let's say I want to throw a fillet on an edge. As soon as I click on the round command, I get asked, you are about to make changes to this part. These changes will not be reflected in the native not model. Would you like to convert this model to a new Creo model? And if I choose do not convert, it's not going to convert it. If I choose OK, then we get this convert to new Creo models dialog box and select the conversion option. Convert automatically or use advanced conversion tools. Let's 
select the radio button for the advanced conversion tools. We also have this check mark uh, for convert all occurrences of the components in other assembly levels. I don't have that in any other occurrences in any other assembly level, so I could check it or uncheck it, doesn't matter. Now I'll click the OK button. And here we have an example of the Convert to New Creo Models dialog box. And I'm going to make it a little wider in here. And again, in this particular situation, I'm just going to convert the file. I don't have anything else. And if I had, uh, let's say, embedded components in, what do they call them in SolidWorks, like virtual assemblies or something like that, then this would be more appropriate. But let's click the OK button. And now when I take a look inside of here, here we have the brake rotor part and it's got a special symbol next to it indicating that it is different. And if I click on it and then click open, here we have it. And we've got again just different symbols in here. Now we have an import feature and then I could go about creating and making other different changes to this. And so Unite Technology is really important because let's be honest, at a lot of companies, they have multiple CAD tools. I re very rarely find a company that doesn't have a few seats here and there of some other software. And most companies are dealing with vendors and suppliers who might be on different CAD packages. And in the past, you were forced to use step files or IGIS files to communicate with them. Now you can work directly with those files from CATIA, NX, SolidWorks, and Inventor. So Unite Technology is very useful for companies that are working in a multi-CAD environment. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.